In this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to control vertices, edges and faces in edit mode in a little bit more detail than we've looked at so far using Blender 2.6. First of all, press tab to go into edit mode. As we know at this stage, we can choose to select vertices, which are the points in our object, edges, which are the lines connecting the points, and faces, which are the polygons created by uh, a sequence of edges connected together. So we can select each of these independently uh, in our objects by clicking the appropriate icon in the header bar of the 3D window at the bottom. Choose face selection mode and then press A to select all of your faces. Press W to open the specials menu and then choose subdivide from the drop down list to add more detail to our cube as we've done several times before. Make two cuts by increasing the number of cuts from the object toolbar on the left. When you're making subdivisions or cuts in an object, you need to make the changes straight away. So select one of the faces by right clicking on it and then once you've selected it, press E to extrude it. Okay, so that's a little bit of recap on using the basics in edit mode. So delete this cube by exiting edit mode, pressing X, then delete, and we're going to make a new cube. So press Shift A and choose cube. Press 3 and 5 on your number pad to go to side view orthographic, and then make the box thin and long on the X axis by using the scale tool by pressing S on the keyboard, and then just after you press S, press X to restrict your movement to the X axis. Of course you can do this on the Y and the Z axis as well by pressing Y or Z. So press Ctrl and OR to do a loop cut about a quarter way from the bottom of your shape. Extrude out the bottom face to create an L shape, kind of like a Lego block. Delete the selected face at the front by pressing X and as we saw before you should always delete what you have selected and we saw this in a previous tutorial. So if you've selected a face, delete a face. If you've selected a vertex, choose to delete vertices from the menu and the same goes for the edges. Press Ctrl and OR to do another loop cut near the end of the bottom section. Delete the two small faces at the side of our object as well so that the end is left open and we can now see inside the shape. Switch to edge selection mode and right click the front bottom edge and then extrude it upwards by pressing E. Switch to vertex select mode and right click on the vertex on the left Hold down shift and right click on vertex on the opposite side of the gap. Press W and then choose merge from the menu. From the drop down menu that shows up, choose at last to weld the two vertices together into one point at the last point that you selected. Do the same thing for the two vertices on the other side. This also fuses the edges together as well. Press Ctrl and OR to do a loop cut and then scroll the mouse wheel forward to make three cuts on the front face of the object. Hold down ALT and right click on the center edge to select the edges. Switch on or enable connected proportional editing in the header options at the bottom and click enable. Press G to grab the edge and move it upwards. Scroll the mouse wheel forwards and backwards to increase or decrease the range of proportion for your connected edges. So you can see if you have the circle quite large 
it's going to connect to every vertice or every edge that's within that radius. Whereas if you just uh, make the circle smaller, it's only going to affect those close to the one that you have selected. Switch off proportional editing again and then add some loop cuts in between each one of the ones that we have selected by pressing Ctrl or and then Alt right click each edge individually and press G to grab and move it upwards. We need to do each one basically one by one uh, to try and create this sort of rounded edge uh, to our object. The next thing that we need to do is to fill in the missing sides of our object. First we look at the bad and also easy way to do this. So select the edges around the hole by Alt right clicking one of the edges. Press Ctrl and F to open the faces menu and then choose fill. This creates bad triangles. It fills in the shape but it the faces are made of three-pointed triangles. Triangles are bad for the topology of your mesh as they make it difficult to manipulate later on and also uh, to make loop cuts or to add extra complexity to your objects because Blender is basically trying to divide an uneven number. So it's much easier for 3D software to work with even numbers and obviously a quad shape has four points and it's easy to divide in half or multiply by two. It's always better to use quads which have four vertices instead of triangles which have three vertices. So go to the faces menu again and choose tries to quads. So this is a special tool in Blender where uh, Blender tries to replace your triangles with quad shapes by analyzing your mesh and recalculating it. But it doesn't always do a particularly good job of it, as we can see here. So delete these faces by pressing X and then delete. And press Ctrl Alt right click on the faces to do a loop cut. That's an advanced keyboard shortcut for something that we already know how to do. Quite simply, if you press Ctrl and OR, uh, you can do the loop cut as usual. So make a loop cut at the base. Okay, next we're going to extrude the bottom edge across. We're trying to fill in the shape here manually. So extrude the bottom edge across by right clicking to select and then pressing E to extrude. And select the two vertices in vertex select mode and press W and then choose merge at last. Repeat the process with the other vertices to connect our edge to the side. Put a loop cut uh, up the way this time and drag the top edge downwards in the same way and merge the vertices with the second and the third point. Pull up an edge in the smaller corner, the smallest corner, and then merge the vertices here as well to create a, qu a quad shape. Okay, loop cut the right, the correct number of cuts and then extrude and merge the edges. Box select the middle vertices and straighten them up using the grab tool or by pressing G. Uh, one by one. And now do a loop cut right down the middle. Select the left vertices and delete them, leaving only half of your object. So we're going to use the mirror modifier to double up the size of our shape and save us half the work. So open the modifier tab and select the mirror modifier on the y-axis. Tick both the merge and clipping boxes in the options and then click apply to apply our mirror modifier. Press smooth in the object tools and then 
undo it or flatten the shape again. So smoothing, as we saw, is not very useful for shapes that have sharp edges. It's very good for soft objects or organ organic objects or things that we want to have rounded or soft edges. So switch smooth back on again and then add the modifier which is called the edge split. Put the angle to about 88 degrees and we can see that the modifier uh, enables our sharp edges to remain while the soft edges become smoother. So this has been a tutorial to introduce some of the more advanced modeling techniques in Blender which you'll hopefully be able to use in your own projects.